I, I don't think getting myself together would be the best description for what I'd gone through in my loss of my friend, but I would say picking when I was picking up the pieces, I always envisioned what would it look like if we had had better support before I lost my friend. What's good, homies? Welcome back to another episode of Housekeeping, and I have an update on plans for the year. So, it's 2024, about to be the end of January. Thank God. I have like four birthdays that I got to prepare for and not enough funds. And my partners, who we do the Told Truth events with, hit me up and let me know it's about to go down. And I'm excited. So with that being said, we have about 6 to 12 all-men events that we're putting together for this year in D.C. And we're finally going to be able to bring to life the all-women events that I'm looking to put together. Now, the reason these events are important to me and I'm, I'm so excited to uh, have an opportunity to bring this to life. Excuse my voice for being hoarse. I've been sick for like the week. But I want to know... What is it that the demographic of women that we're looking to serve is expecting from groups like Get Home Safe and groups like Total Truth when it comes to these peaceful events that we're putting together? Um, keep in mind, when I use the word peaceful events, we're starting to incorporate more language like peaceful instead of safe space because... One of the therapists or soon to be therapists who I sat down with let me know that when it comes to the term safe space, it's used so much and not everybody knows what a safe space is. And when she, Allie, my friend, art therapy, I'll probably have the link down below, explained not everyone knows what a safe space is. So for people like us, we may understand what a safe space is because we've created safe spaces. We know what it means to be safe and we try to be as confidential with people's information as possible unless they need help in the emergency sense. We do keep a lot of what we learn about people and who is related to close to our hearts outside of the content that we make just for relatability purposes and for when people would like to get help. Whether it be help in the mental health sense, help in terms of folks being paired with new therapists, or help in the sense of if I want to bring the work that we do at Get Home Safe or the work that we see you doing with these other groups to our spaces like schools, hospitals, corporations, what would that look like? What's the expectancy and how should we reach out to you and what should the expectancy and the relationship of the people that reach out to us look like? So within the total truth events that we've done we basically we pair one wellness with one mental health conversation and we go through the whole routine of let's say a yoga class or a sound bowl therapy class and then we have a mental health discussion because outside of folks that are going to therapy professionally or folks that are interested in the benefits of mental health there's not a lot of middle spaces where people can have open discussions of what's going on in their lives, have open discussions of what they would like more of in their lives and people that are receptive to that and that can make suggestions to that and that can point them in the right direction outside of a hashtag on social media. And this is one of the few spaces that I can think of that people could come to me or the folks that I'm working with between Tay, between Brent, between Brandon and say, hey, I'd like to practice yoga. Are there other classes that you guys host? I'd like to do more sound bowl therapy. Are there other people that you think I'd be able to attend and have a similar experience to what you put together? Or I'd like to attend one of your mental health events in terms of me as an advocate and have more mental health discussions or point me in the direction of a therapist that may fit me or here's what I have going on. Do you have a therapist that may specialize in this thing? And if they have any availabilities, how should I approach them? So, on the woman's side, especially when it comes to putting together a mental health and a wellness event, one of my first concerns are, as we put these events together, especially when it comes to all women events, 
what should the room look like? Is there a woman yogi or a woman practitioner of sound bowl therapy that I could partner with to bring into the space that we're putting together? What would that look like? Who's the woman therapist that I'd like to work with on this kind of project or other names I may want to throw in the hat of these projects? And are these people comfortable with public speaking? Because as much as I've done a lot of public speaking and I have a lot of great folks who I've interviewed when it comes to Get Home Safe and Mental Health Monday, not everybody's actually attuned to doing a public speaking event or comfortable with the concept of speaking publicly and people exploring who they are or getting over a stutter or getting over when I make mistakes it can't be edited out like the platforms and the things that we've done so far um are will they be comfortable with men being in the space and when I say men I mean the people who may be we're going to have some recorded events that's one thing that we're going to bring to life letting people know that we are creating these peaceful places for folks to express themselves and we don't want people's faces shown through the majority of the discussions but when it comes to the yoga classes or the sambo classes we would like to create more highlights and more thumbprints on the work that we've already been doing for a couple of years but now we have a platform in terms of get home safe where a lot of the events or how the events look and feel are going to start to be based and come together i've hit my boy makina media who i'm super excited to do work with for the events he's down gave me a great rate <laughs> shout out to you brooke and as we put these spaces together we put these events together are we going to be able to produce the feeling and the takeaway that the men have received in the same spaces that the women are going to fill and do they need us in the spaces or are we going to be comfortable just creating the thing and putting it together and them existing and enjoying and everybody walking away with their shoulders a little bit higher or with a couple more resources that they may not have had that day and can we accomplish doing this as a group in terms of putting it together and stepping away or will we be able to put it together and be a part of the space and learn what are the topics that women are concerned of when it comes to themselves what are the topics that women are concerned of when it comes to men that may not be digested the same way on social media is there a space for us to put these two groups together and create a middle ground for discussion and really be attuned to having the more serious conversations when it comes to mental health in our community and is there a way to create respect between both groups as we come together for folks to really have the discussion on are we really putting ourselves first are we really doing right by our community is there is there something that we can gain that we don't already have and are we not only doing right by the community, but is this what the community needs right now with everything that's going on? And that, to me, that's that's major, that's super major. So I'm excited. Um, definitely looking forward to what we do concept wise. I definitely see us getting six recordings of the classes that we do in the all men spaces six recordings of what we do in the all women spaces and what those discussions look like i'm definitely looking forward to hitting up uh my therapist jasmine one of the folks who i work with she definitely has an interview that's coming out in a couple of weeks when february starts and and we're going to be talking about being a doula we're going to be talking about the work that she does when it comes to trauma therapy we're going to be talking about the work that she does when it comes to men and women that are about to have babies and where her as a therapist is now working in this space as a doula and what that looks like as we play a game of Uno because who doesn't like games as we're having this discussions. And with that being said, all the work that I've done is is happening because I decided not to give up when we started this platform of get home safe in 2019 and you know it was, there was so much behind the scenes in 2018 when i i don't think getting myself together would be the best description for what i'd gone through in my loss of my friend but i would say picking when i was picking up the pieces i always envisioned what would it look like if we had had better support before I lost my friend. I always wondered what would it look like if 
we had more of an education of the people around us and the people that we care for and the people that we'd like to see better for and are we doing enough in general for ourselves and how much of this thing called mental health and wellness starts with us and when does that start to bleed over into the community and are we really setting up the right barriers boundaries and resources for us to tap into are we having enough of the conversations out loud and when do we not when does it not need to be about wellness when does it not need to be about mental health when is it time to after we do all this work when do people get to take breaks i think um as my guy jay in the last interview that just dropped on monday it's coming out wednesday on monday we talk about jay's been in therapy for 12 years to me that's a lot that means he had access to therapy as a child he had access to therapy in his teenage years and he now has access to therapy as an adult I've never experienced that before. I, the the concept of mental health didn't start for me until 2011, 2012. I always knew it was a thing, but it was never a discussion point or a concern of mine. And that's when my mental health journey started, but that that's a story for another day. And in these 12 years of him doing therapy, I title it 12 years of therapy because there was pushback. His parents forced him into therapy at a young age. I could see why he wouldn't have wanted to listen. If something's forced on you, therapy is supposed to be something that you choose, something that you work up to, and something that you realize the value of, hopefully, or you at least try to realize that there's value here and value that's being offered. In his journey of therapy and everything that he was going through he told me about stages of therapy when he just showed up to sessions and acted like he was trying to be honest he told me about rebelling against therapy and writing it off and figuring it's over after high school he told me about him having so much anxiety that he got sick from having too much anxiety and needing therapy again and taking it seriously and how much that made a change in his life but even with that discussion we also touch on the fact that therapy isn't meant to be easy and it's not something that's fantastical that a lot of these brands are advertising getting help is a it's a lot of work it's a, it's a lot of discussions it's a lot of digging up old roots the the example that we use about what therapy is, the process itself, and how it feels to go to therapy and to show up and to be in front of a therapist and take out these parts of yourself that you don't want to acknowledge. It's like it's like you have a garage that you have to clean out. And you open a garage and you start moving boxes, you start moving bags, you start coming across things that you don't even know what they are anymore, who they belong to, or what it's about, and you just have it on your front lawn. And going into therapy means at some point people are now going to see your stuff on front street. So it's not so private anymore. It's not so tucked away. It's not behind all the boxes and the tapes and the coverings and the shutting of the garage. And then it becomes, oh... That, that stuff belongs to me. All that stuff belongs to me. Why did we decide to go into the garage? Why did we decide to move these boxes in these bags? Why did we loosen things up that we were fine with keeping packed away? Why are we changing the format that we've gotten comfortable with? Why, why are we putting our trauma out there? <laughs> why are we putting the mess out there? Why are we changing what the fold was before and then coming to realize the reason you went to therapy and the reason you got help and the reason you're doing this work which isn't fun is because you feel better or at least have a better understanding of the mess that you've packed away and all the things that it affects you start to understand things like why i do the things that i do you start to pinpoint how things started why they don't stop and why these things are and integral part of me and you have certain things that you can't negotiate that you thought oh no i have full autonomy over that and it's like no it actually has autonomy over you a couple of my folks were telling me of people that say they don't believe in mental health that's fine and all that but when mental health starts believing in you when mental health starts popping up in different parts of your life when mental health starts rearing its it's it's ugly head and when i say mental health i mean 
neg- mental health in the negative parts. Like when people speak of anxiety and people speak of depression and they speak of the negative aspects of discovering you have ADHD at such an older age, but it was covered up by your parents because they wanted you to have the full experience of you going to school and you being taken care of and you just having, you know, friends and not being judged for who you are. And now as an adult, you don't have the proper tools to deal with who you are, the things that are not only manifesting themselves, but now they're a much larger topic. And, and they're more they're more than just little quirky things. When it comes to mental health and the discussion of being in therapy for so long, a lot of it sucks. But when it's sucking and after going through the trials and tribulations of being honest with yourself and discovering that certain things are a part of you, it becomes a bit easier to accept yourself for who you are and the sources of where these things may have come from that you didn't realize before. It becomes easier, hopefully with the right coping tools or the right people around you that create the right environments to not just work on accepting who you are, but also accepting who you're gonna have to be for yourself in the near future and how the person you allow yourself to be may be one of the most important steps to you as a father, to you as a mother, to you as a cousin, to you as a grandmother. My mom has this belief that I'm too old to go to therapy. (laughs) And as much as I love her, you're never old enough to go to therapy. We're never old enough to get help. We're never old enough to accept help. We're never old enough to move out of the things we may need for ourselves but at the end of the day the things that we need do still start with us and that doesn't change for most people across the board no matter the color of the board so in this episode of housekeeping obviously i've brought a lot of files a lot of you know What's those called? Easter eggs? So the things that we're going to be getting into and not just speaking engagements, but just engagements, period, with people, events with people, working with different folks, creating safe spaces and turning them into peaceful places because not everyone has had a safe space and coming to terms with the concept of as we build out what we're building for 2024, how much of the community can we incorporate into what we're doing? How many more people would want to get involved with what we're doing? Are we creating what's necessary? You know, the things about fads is they have a short period of time, and there's nothing wrong with being a fad, but when it comes to a movement, what you look to do is you look and you hope that the work that you're doing makes an impact, and the people who feel it take it personally because they knew what the world was before we started doing this work, and and things have gotten just a little bit closer to what they always pictured things could be. Or maybe even a little bit closer to picturing what things are now and, and being okay with accepting that for what it is. <sighs> Man, I feel super passionate in this talk today. I wish I wish I had my voice, but you know, you, you guys gonna have to just get what I got. Um also I had to catch up with Miss Unique Jordan. That's always great friends great friends and i like call her miss unique jordan because i like putting respect on her name and she's she's running a book club she's sitting down with women they're talking about books that's their discussion they're discussing um inner child work she's discussing her past let's meet up with so many people and juggling things having speaking engagements over at howard lining it up and the reason I say don't give up, which was a message I incorporated in the middle of this discussion is I truly didn't see me getting to this point of my career as a mental health advocate or someone that does these interviews and makes space for these heavy topics. And I've always felt there's always someone better than me or a better fit for what it is that I'm doing. But just because there's someone that's a better fit for what it is that I'm doing doesn't mean that I'm just going to wait around for them to show up. Why wait for them when I can get it started? Then when they come along, hey, you got the rock. I don't need to be here. But in the meantime, until someone pulls up and they do better, until someone comes through and says, hey, I got you, champ. You can just go plan it out. Be here for a brick. Be here for a brick. 
every day and moment that people reach out to me about the things that they're planning and every day and moment I get to talk to people that we're on the same page and we're building these things it gives me a little bit of hope it, it makes me hope for better it helps me accept what is and what isn't and then that's okay and in speaking to the people and saying what I'm saying to them the message isn't just for them it's also for me too that's why I set these rooms up for these shoots behind me. That's the shoot for the in your shoes concept in my shoes. Behind that, that's the setup for the Mental Health Monday concept. Link will be down below. <laughs> and as I as I end this discussion, because I, I don't want to rant too much, I am blessed beyond measure that I have the opportunity to do this work and that I know what's too much for me and what's just enough and that we're planning for a better future so I'd like to end this off with saying hello for my new 1800 followers hello to my old 400 followers hello to everyone that's here new to the channel my name's Juice Jones. I'm a mental health and wellness advocate out of D.C. I create mental health content. We touch on depression, anxiety, ADHD, and suicidal ideations. We talk about people's real experiences. We try to give advice best, non-medical advice, but advice best on how do I handle a situation as it's progressing? What are good boundaries that we should create for the people that we enjoy having around us? What does it mean to be a partner to someone who's really going through it? As the person that's going through it, what's the best advice that we could provide for them before and prior to the emergency? What should our concerns be when it comes to these things that we're juggling called life as it's hidden that's left and right? What does it mean to be a good friend? And when all this is said and done, I just hope that people are able to get home safe. So, this has been another episode of Housekeeping. It's your boy Juice Jones. <laughs> like, share, subscribe. Thanks to all you homies for pulling up, and this is uh, another episode of Housekeeping. See y'all later. Peace.